and um, obviously welcome to a, a different episode of Carp Adventures. Today I'm going to be taking you through how to uh, roll your own boilies. Um, I know there's absolutely hundreds of videos out there on YouTube um, and even on like the Corder, Hinder's site, obviously teaching you how to make boilies. I'm going to teach you my method, um, may it be the correct way, the wrong way, obviously it's up to you to decide and obviously the uh, ingredients and locally sourced stuff I can find um, just within my house and obviously just in around local supermarkets that I use to create a perfect boilie. Now I, um, I've been making pop-ups um, on a regular basis now I thought I'll go into the big game and now and start making some bottom baits. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll talk you through what I've got, where I got it from and obviously I'll show you the process of um, how I make boilies. Okay then what I'll do is I'll obviously start off from uh, left to right. Um, a mixing bowl, obviously a mixing bowl, you can use your mum's best bowl or your dad's depending, um, don't think they'd be best please. So uh, obviously I've used use a, a ground bait bucket um, that uh, I won in a competition. My missus uses it to, uh, to make some like potato salad in there and all that so I'm going to take it back off her and use it for ground bait bowl, uh, for boilie making and obviously mixing the bait up. Um, below it, got a big bucket, I just use that to hold all my um, flavours. Um, basically powders, uh, any any enhancers, ingredients, etc. Moving on, um, air drying um, tables. You can source them from any local um, green grocer, um, supermarket, basically air drying uh, for mushrooms or your local guard room, where I got them from. Rolling table, now um, obviously you have to buy these. Um, it's the only, the only way to really to roll them. Got the old rolling table, which is 14 mil one side and um, 16 mil the other. Uh, ingenious little bit of kit, simple and practical, brilliant. And obviously I've got a 16 mil table in there, lightly covered in oil. Eggs, um, obviously you get them from your local supermarket or from your local farm. Uh, I'll be using in about about five in this mix. It's normally one egg per 250 grams of uh, base mix. Uh, moving on to the base mix, uh, obviously because I'm in Germany, uh, semolina mix is obviously pasta, pasta meal over here. So I've got about a, a kilogram there, or just over a kilogram. Uh, another little ingenious idea is next time you go to the doctors, um, or if like myself in the forces, you go to the medical centre, they have these little piss pots here, little piss samples. Brilliant, obviously up in mills, so you can put your sample in there. I've just grabbed a handful when I was in there. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I was in there for though. And then obviously we're moving on to our flavours and enhancers. On this one, when I'm making boilies, I'm going to be using a a fish meal flavour, so I'll be using pure krill from Sticky Baits, around about 10 mil of that per um, 250 grams worth of mix, um, and a couple of things from mainline, i.e. the uh, crayfish flavouring and the multi stim. Uh, with with your base base mix, um, you obviously use semolina. Um, what I'll be using is this big bag here, which is basically crushed hemp, um, flour, bird food, and I'll be doing like a 50-50 mix with the semolina and what's in this bag here. When we're going on to um, adding additives, i.e. like um, a lot of people put butric acid in it, um, whey protein that people use for bodybuilding, uh, there's a method I go through and a lot of the army forces know this and it's the method KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay? End of day, you're putting that stuff in it. I understand to benefit the fish, um, its health. However, the way I look at it, a carp wouldn't eat an egg and therefore we're putting four eggs in a mix. You know, if we were to leave the carp population without the human population, they just simply wouldn't eat eggs. So um, keep it natural, keep it simple, uh, and I'm sure the fish will, get, will eat it anyway. Uh, we'll find this out because the bait I'm going to be using will be used on my next fishing competition, which is end of this month. Uh, I'm returning back to Etang Rue de Bat, or Etang Rue in Belgium, where I'll be fishing a competition. And I'm going to be using the bait now um, that I'm, I'm going to roll in a minute. So what I'll do is I'm going to obviously wash up my hands, get some gloves on if I can find any. Uh, and then I'll take you through the process of how I make my boilies. Hope you enjoy it. Okay then, uh, what I'm going to take you through, obviously I've got my bait bucket, um, as previously shown earlier. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of oil residue in there, but it's not really going to matter. Um, as I said before, you want to be ideally doing your liquids first, or your wets, uh, mixing them up before you obviously you add the powder in. When I'm adding the powder in, um, the semolina mix, and also um, my bag of mixed uh, ground bait, uh, crushed hemp, bird food. Um, I'm gonna do like a 50-50. So uh, as I said before, it's one nearly one egg, depending on the size. These are medium eggs. Um, I'm gonna use about four or five of them, and I'm gonna mix it up in the green bowl. Doesn't really matter if you get any eggshell in there. 
Um, say the uh, carp are used to crunching up on mussels, uh, and basically anything else that they find in the lake. That's three. I'm going to use five for this just because I can. All right. Just means that I'll add more base mix, obviously, to make it a little bit drier. So there's five eggs in there. Just skip that crap. So when you've been using this, obviously get permission from your family. Obviously if you live alone like me or live married, just crack on with it. What I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna, you can either, if you've got, if you're posh and got an electric whisker, crack on. I was gonna use the Mark One uh, fork, the wife's uh, best cutlery. She loves it when I make bait with it. Okay, so I've obviously done that with the egg. It looks um, like an omelet, almost. And what I'm going to add now is my liquid flavourings. Okay, if you've got liquid colour, um, add that. I use powder colour, but on this one I'm going to keep it natural and add no colour. Basically the ground bait that I've got down there will add like a, a natural mustard um, colour towards it. So I've got my, uh, excuse the language, piss pot. All right, and I'm going to put, it's meant to be 5 mil per every 250 millilitres. I am going to put 20 mil of sticky pure krill which is good stuff by the way, not just for pouring over your pellet, as it says it can be used in a base mix additive. I'm gonna pour in 20 mil in there, it's quite sticky stuff. That's roughly 20 mil, doesn't matter if you go over or under, all right, a little bit under. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour that in there. Stuff honks, that's why I'm doing this while the wife's out of the house. Okay. And that's a dog barking at something. So that's 20 mil in there, okay. Now I don't know whether what the score is when people say that if you add too much flavouring, you know, it can turn the fish off. Uh, or do they go by visual, by colour? To be honest, nobody knows unless you actually um, go down there in the water and have a look yourself. Um, same again, I'm going to add some multi-stim from uh, Mainline Baits. This is a bit of a flavour enhancer. And what I'll do is I'll add 20ml of that to my piss pot. 20ml goes in. And then now for the fun stuff, crayfish. Now this stuff is potent, so what I'll do is I'm going to add um, a little bit less than 20 mil. I'm going to put in 10, 10 mil. Once I've done that, happy days. Put the lid on it. Don't want to spill it. My wife will kill me, and the dog will start licking it up. Give it a good mix. So you want it all to bind. absolute honks so if you've got um, an extractor fan put it on or crack over the window obviously keep on uh, whisking it until you're happy that all the yolks broken up and it is a liquid and the colors and flavors are mixed in with the egg and that is it ideally for the liquid stage of, um, of this process what I'm going to do now is show you the, um, the powder part and what we're going to do from there on. Okay then, now moving on to the powder part. Um, the way they say it is add little by little and obviously stir it up. I'm not going to put in uh, like 250 grams of um, my pasta stroke semolina mix and then like another 250 grams of my special bag mix here because at the end of the day it may go wrong and I have to start again so it's easier doing it little by little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have 50 grams of, um, of each mix and then pour it into the bucket. They say that you should mix your powders together. End of the day, uh, I can't be asked, uh, and I, I can't see no method behind it actually working. So, 50 in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour that into the bucket. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give 50 gram of my bag mix. And as I said before, this is only uh, crushed hemp bird food um, and some other little bits and bobs in there so when it decides to come out as you see it's like a mustardy colour so there's no need for, uh, for adding any um, any colour to it so what I'll do spoon that in there and I'm going to give it another stir again give it another mix get it all mixed in excuse the dog barking he's going to get a shoe in in a minute and what you're looking for is a texture. Once you've got your um, 
your base mix, right? It should be like Play-Doh. If you've got kids, it'd be like Play-Doh. Um, it's still a little bit sticky. But once you've got like it, you can put it into a ball. That's your idea then, to stick it in the fridge for at least half an hour. Just to let the moisture evaporate from the mix. And then you can crack on rolling it then. But as you can see there, it's still a little bit liquidy. So all I'm going to do is going to keep on adding little by little. I'm not going to record it. I'm just going to show you until I get the mix right. So 50-50 of my uh, semolina mix and also my bag mix. And there we have the, um, the finished product. A nice ball of, of paste. Still a little bit moist just because of the sheer size of it. I said I was going to stick it in the fridge for about half an hour. Um, depending, obviously looking at that weight there. Um, I'm actually going to stick it in for an hour. Um, this will enable it then for when I take it out of the fridge to have the, basically less of the stickiness and it'll be easier just to roll on the table. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bang that in a sandwich bag um, and then I'm going to put that in the fridge for an hour. So see you in an hour. Okay now that's in the, it's banged in the fridge. Um, I thought while I'm waiting for it to dry about another 45 minutes yet. Um, I was going to bring you on the topic of uh, flavouring bait. Now um, when you're doing your own custom baits, you've got uh, an absolute mass amount of flavours. And basically, my wife she um, she makes a few cakes, and um, we're lucky enough where I live here in Bielefeld, Germany. We've got the uh, Dr. Ertke factory just down the road. Obviously, they make uh, extracts of um, vanilla, um, basically sweet flavourings. Now, um, I've tried some of them in my base mix before, i.e., vanilla and um, rum, and also um, almond. It smells a bit like Disarono. We've had it before now. I've made a few pop ups with them flavoring, and um, you need to get them a little tube like this. Two seconds, I'll show you. Get them in a little tube like that, okay? An old doctor, get them from any supermarket, I guarantee you get these in the UK. Um, only a little tube, something like literally two drops of that. Um, well, flavored and smelled my bait. So you're talking 250 grams for um, literally about three drops of um, extract. Uh, this one's a bitter almond again, smells like Disarono. Um, so yeah, flavouring baits. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in your house that you can use. Um, obviously, I've still got mainline stuff. I bought it because I didn't think it was as good as, um, well, this stuff is good as what you can get from mainline, but it's actually proved me wrong. Um, this stuff is actually more potent than the stuff you get from mainline. I'm not saying don't use mainline, but obviously shop around. Um, say you get 250 mil, I think that costs about, I don't know, seven, seven bob from mainline for any flavour. Um, obviously here, you, you can get about 50 mil for uh, even half the price and it's stronger. So um, yeah, shop around guys, find stuff like this, absolutely fantastic. But because of, obviously Dr. Ertke don't do fish flavoured cakes, I've had to use the mainline stuff. But if, you use, if you're doing sweet stuff, vanilla, plum, um, strawberry, blackcurrant, rum, uh, rum's one, it's a good one. Um, yeah. Go shopping around Tesco's or uh, Sainsbury's for me. I go shopping around Real, and um, they love the cakes over here and the sausage. So um, get shopping. Another one is um, come on to a debate. Is when you fish in winter, what flavors do you go for? Do you go for fish or do you go for sweet? Um, I know it all depends on the oils. The oils don't work in a certain temperature. Um, so if you use hemp oil or salmon oil, obviously it congeals when it's in colder water i.e. then in the summer months it expands and you can actually see the slick on top of the water from when you're doing it. I've done the opposite me, I've actually fished um, fish baits in winter, oily baits, and I've actually do sweet baits in summer. My personal opinion, you know, end of the day, if a fish goes for visual, um, it goes for colour. If it goes for smell, um, obviously it will go for um, sweet stuff or bitter or fish stuff. Um, so I'd like to hear your, your views on this. Um, you, you see it all in the mag, and I think people actually get brainwashed and they get, as I say, too complicated into, into what carping's all about. Um, you can say, if you use it, my method, keep it simple, stupid, the old kiss method, you can't go wrong. Um, if a fish does take it visually, then obviously there's no need for me to flavour my baits um, if it goes on colour. Um, same again, apparently carp don't like the colour red, but then again you've seen a lot of red line uh, made on people's reels. Uh, a lot of red baits, I know I've caught a lot on strawberry, on the old uh, Dynamite's red. So yeah, it's a bit of a debate. Uh, I think the world of carping is getting a bit too complicated, especially now if you're looking at rigs as well. Uh, and in the bait, with so many bait companies now, uh, influxing it, I think um, 
it's, just, it's a different world now, to be honest. But I'll leave it up to you. Put your comments below in the box. Give me shit if you need to give me shit. End of day, to be honest. Um, you know, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. So uh, yeah, fire away. And hopefully in the next 40 minutes, because I've just rambled on for five, <laughs> my big ball of paste will be ready to roll. All right. Now obviously what you're going to get, the best thing about making your own baits is you can make them any shape you want. Okay. You can use either the rolling table or if you've got the time, um, roll them by hand. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not hard just to, to break a little bit up like that. And if you say you want a decent size um, boilie or if you want an egg shaped or 18 mil, you know, there we are, like that. If you can see that okay, I have to lower this camera down a little bit. But yeah, a nice little boilie there, it's about 18 mil. And the same again, if you just want to make a couple of tippers, just roll them smaller. Bulk of it I'm going to use obviously the table for, it's just a lot simpler. And there you are, you've got your, your tiny little tipper there. Okay. But obviously I said before, I'm going to make the majority with the table and at the end I'll make some, um, some uh, pillow shaped uh, boilies. Say so something's different for the fish to see instead of the usual round shape. You can make squares if you've got the time. You know, the world's your oysters, as I say, so make what you need or make what you want. Okay, I'm about um, halfway through now. Um, still got half a chunk of paste to go. And I've already filled, um, I've already filled one mushroom tray. I'm actually on my second tray now. Um, so I've done a few odd shapes, I've done a few. Um, Egg shapes, I've done a few pillow shapes. Um, now this top one's all going to be 16 mil. And what you can do, is obviously I'm only doing this so I can throw out freebies when I go to roux. Um, once they've dried out, I'm actually going to glug some and use them as hard hookers. So I'll let them dry for a little bit longer than what I would normally do. Um, obviously gonna, because I've put no preservative in the egg, I'm going to have to freeze it straight away or after a day's hardening. But I'll, I'll move on to that later on, but I see some of them sticking to the uh, to the tray. But nice, perfectly round form boilies. I see you get the odd pillow shape one there. I'll put that to the side because I've got enough of them. And that one there. But these ones are just going to get launched out as freebies, and the rest. Let's make that a little bit thinner. The rest I'll probably freeze or use hard hookers, so hopefully they catch me. And I might be able to make some money out of this, but uh, never know, do you? you're rolling it a few times, jobs a fish, but with baits. Okay, that's me just finished uh, rolling baits. They're all roughly around about 16 mil. Um, I've done probably about half by the rolling table uh, and half by hand. Obviously, I've made some odd shapes. Um, got some pillows here. Obviously got perfectly round ones, pellet shape, you know, something different for the carp to see on the uh, on the on the lake floor. But um, as you say, it's custom baits. It's making your own baits, you know. Whether it, it works or not, it's a trial and error, to be honest. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, normally what you'd see people do is they'd bung it straight in the water for about a minute and a half. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these now for half an hour. The reason being is that when I pour it into the pan. Or I, I'd normally I'll just tip it straight into the pan with um, a sieve on top. It would normally stick. If I leave them for about half an hour, the um, the obviously starts to harden a little bit, and then um, I'll just pour them in. So uh, I'll give it half an hour, and um, gives me time to go and have a smoke. Okay, so the uh, the obviously the water's boiling now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the boilies into the boiling water for around about a minute and a half, two minutes. Um, no no rough timing. Get them all in there. Just a bit of health and safety here, just watch out for the splash back. Okay, that's about a minute and a half gone. What I'm going to do is turn this off the hob. Boiling water. I'm like pouring spuds out. I'm going to take it from here to my drying tray. Okay. 
and take off any excess water I can. A bit of kitchen roll, or if you've got a towel. And that was about just under two minutes in there. Look nice and raw. Obviously, give it about another five minutes, they'll be quite hard. Um, so, you're trying to get any, any excess water off. Give them a shake. There we go. After drying, um, that's what we've got left now. Different shapes, as I mentioned before. Got like a pillow. Pellet and a ball. Um, just going to go on the subject. I'm also leaving Germany in a, in actually a couple of months. Um, in fact, like four months, uh, and I'm moving towards um, Oakham. Um, Facebook being the social network inside it is. Obviously, um, I subscribe to Back of the Land in that. Um, give a shout out to Chris Carp King Fennel. Um, obviously these guys I've never met before in my life but you know I enjoy watching the shows and I actually hope to hook up with you. Also on Facebook I've joined um, Lincolnshire Carp Group or Carp Hunters. Um, same again, I've been over in Germany fishing these solid waters uh, looking for a carp that's probably not even in the water. Um, so I'm actually looking back forward to getting back to you, you know UK commercial lakes. Uh, it's good networking, you know, if any of you know of any good lakes around um, Cottesmore, Melton Mowbray, I know you've got the A1 pits, obviously put that in the comments below because I'm after a syndicate or ideally just a decent lake with no stupid rules um, that I can go there and enjoy a few overnighters and also bring my dog. Um, seen on Google, typed it in, but a lot of the places are um, either proper crap rules, um, they don't look after the place and they don't allow pets. Um, even better if you can bring a bait boat because obviously being over here I've invested in a Viper Storm too um, because the lakes you know they're not in acres or in hectares they are massive so to get a, a lead into the middle of the lake you're going to need arms like Arnie and obviously me Johnny Worm arms here I ain't going to have that chuck so a bait boat comes in handy um, maybe look at selling it in the UK I don't know until I get over there and see what the waters are like um, but apart from that yeah any help needed guys I'm using this as a social network into Ask you all any decent waters around Lincolnshire, Leicester area. Um, obviously, the A1 pits I know about, linears I know about. Um, any secret, you know, sneaky beaky syndicates that people keep to themselves, PM me, all right? And I'll make it worth your while. But um, obviously, thanks for watching, guys, on YouTube. Um, I hope you enjoyed, obviously, the way I make my baits. And uh, you may have taken something from it, you may have, you may have not. Uh, but that's, that's the way I, I work. And it's the second time I've made my own boilies now. Um, I've still got about half a kilogram in the freezer. I don't make much, to be honest. It only takes one boilie for a, for a carp. Um, but yeah, um, please subscribe if this is the first time you're watching. And um, I'm all welcome to comments, guys. Uh, if I don't reply to you, I will do in due time. All right, but thanks for watching. And um, I hope you make some absolutely cracking boilies. Thanks.